Okay, Gamar Khatima Tova. I hope everybody had a, a meaningful Rosh Hashanah and inspiring davening. It's a uh, it's powerful two days. And uh, okay, now we uh, get this here to make sure. But as we uh, we heard, I first heard it from Rabbi Liebtag, but it uh, comes from many sources. It's, of course, more important what we do between Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah than what we do between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So uh, this is just, you know, the little bit here. But anyway, it's, uh, this is part four, the last part. But uh, we'll talk to Dr. Benny and, you know, we'll have him back. Uh, he likes me to push him to come and, and teach, I think. He, even though he doesn't always like it, he usually thanks me for pushing him to come. So we'll never, never. Him. <laughs> I'll have to do that afterwards. I, well, I want to. You are my favorite nudnik. My favorite nudnik. Yeah, that's what I say. A lot of people consider me that their favorite. Nudnik. I don't want you. I don't want you even to feel like that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's all in in good jest. We go back many many years, and uh, but it, yeah, I, I am sometimes a little bit of a nudnik, but Bar Hashem. Um, for only for for good things, I hope. Um, I, I want to thank uh, once again Jack and Marla Samuel who are sponsoring this series in memory of uh, Yitz Kurtz and Isaac Hollander. We mentioned uh, the Toronto friends of ours, both of whom unfortunately passed away. Milo Bakitso, I guess I can say that. Um, and uh, we should uh, have good good memories. They were wonderful people and wonderful role models who I knew well, of course, and Benny knew well. And uh, anyways, we should all be merit long life. That's what we think about this year. And uh, now we're going to move into Sukkot. Now that we're after Rosh Hashanah, we'll talk about, about Sukkot already. Dr. Benny Vivakasha, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Rabbi Jay. Welcome to the last lecture of the four lectures on the Yoshalmi. That was quite a condensed course, very intense courses. It was for myself a big challenge to learn and to present it. I'm interested in the field for many years, but it was uh, the first time to give a, a set of Boshirim and to show a consistency. I hope it was possible for you to get an idea about the beautiful, amazing world and uh, the consistency between topic to topic. The material is online. I don't think that from four lectures one can really understand enough it's worthwhile to repeat it to read it over and there's a certain gap that we are three weeks ahead so you can repeat it what we had on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur and I hope you uh, it will be a, a meaningful experience I want to focus now for the last Chiu on Sukkot and the topic is the Hoshanot Hoshanot is the name of the prayers but it's actually about the Yeshua, which God gives us. So it's God's redemption and Simchat Achak. And I'm trying to give a new meaning to it by looking very carefully at those Mishnayot, which represent the Simchat Achak. And by looking into these Mishnayot, written by Rabbi Yudha Nasi in 200, about after the common uh, area, 220, and looking to the Talmud Bavli and the Yerushalmi, I think we can learn quite a lot. And today we will use another technique to use one of the poets, Ravi Elazar Kalir, to learn from his beautiful Tfilot Hoshana to go back to the Yerushalmi. There are many ways to get to the Yerushalmi. I would like to start the lecture by uh, while trying to look at the meaning, the psychology, the religious world. I think for this lecture, you see, I have something with Mount Everest and there are different views on the Mount Everest. I think what we will learn today is an amazing, beautiful world of the Yerushalmi, of their inner experience, what is fulfillment for the Chachamim in the Yerushalmi. And that is a very special look. There are many ways to look at the, at the Yerushalmi Bavli. And what we are going to uh, learn today will hopefully show you a very, very beautiful insight from what's going on in their inner life, in their, in their spiritual life. I would like to start with the Rambam, Maimonides, who at the end of his Hilchot Shofar and Lulav, he talks about these special days of Simcha, of joy, of joy. And very often at the end, Rambam has Maimonides of the end of a collection of halachot. He goes in some <clears throat> general messages. He wants to close the halachot with a take-home message, which is beyond the halachical instructions. 
and he talks about a certain concept, a philosophical concept. Rabbi Professor Tversky elaborated that in his wonderful um, introduction to the Mishneh Torah on many examples. And I would like to start with the happiness which a person should rejoice at the end of Sukkot. And I would like to ask Rabbi Kelman to read this beautiful piece. Should I enlarge it or is it okay like that? It's okay. You're, you're putting me to work, I guess. Uh, okay. You're repaying the favor. Um, we okay. have a, if you can, if you can make it slightly, it's okay for me, but I imagine if it'd be slightly bigger, would be fine. With people might appreciate that. I'm going to read it in Hebrew if that's okay. I can translate it if you want, but I'm, I'm going to. Oh, better it. you read it here. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Oh, you, you want me to read it in, in English? English? In oh, English. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I prefer Hebrew, but okay. I, I won't argue. Yes, but I think for the audience, it's important to translate. Yeah, they can read the translation. I'll do it in Hebrew. They can follow in English, and then I'll summarize. If if nobody is that wants. best for the audience, whatever is good for the audience. Yeah, I, I, Hebrew, I think I that's fine. I think I'll, 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 we'll do both. You can follow in the English. Even though there's a a, a mitzvah to be happy in all the holidays, there was extra happiness on Sukkot. Um, how would the, the, this extra joy manifest? So this is very interesting. This is the beginning of the mechitza that the, the men used to be below and the women up. I assume that's not your topic. Um, where we go? And after the first day of Yontav, they, of course, they only had one day. They were very happy. You can keep the English so people can follow if they want, Benny, so they can see. They have it so they can see the English. Now we can only see the English. And let us see both. Now I can't see the Hebrew. Leave it like that. That's fine. So every day after they brought the afternoon sacrifice, extra joy. You should be very joyous. And not the, the ignorant. This wasn't just for the masses. The elite of the people, Chachmei Yisrael, Roshay Yeshivot, Sanhedrin, Basidim, Skeinim, and Shemasa, all the elite of the elite, they were the ones, Hayyum Mirakdim, they would dance and the Mesbikim, Umenagdim, and play musical instruments. Interesting. Umesamchim, Mikdash, Bimechag, they would all rejoice. Aval Kola, Marashim, Rashim, Kulam, Bim, everybody came to watch, but it was the uh, elite who were leading. This is a, a um, you're fulfilling a divine command. This is great work. Great work and, and great service is probably a better translation. Whoever doesn't do this um, rejoicing should be punished. We should uh, take from him. But that was the, the curses we read in Parsha Kitavo a few weeks ago. That Torah says the reason God is being cursed, it's an amazing verse. It's really powerful because we didn't worship God with joy. It's not enough to worship God. God, God got to worship God with joy. This is not a personal simcha. Somebody who does the simcha and, and is willing to express this joy, this is uh, someone who worships God of love. In other words, don't worry about your personal. It doesn't look good. Some, you know, uh, religious leader, you know, acting in a sort of, you know, dancing like a mashugana. Uh, it's okay. That's the way it should be. I imagine my translation is not the same as they have on the left. The, the greatness is to rejoice before God. Etc. And that's how we end. To always rejoice before God. Benny, did I pass? Excellent. So the end... He gives a description of what happened during the seven days. Once a day, they were walking around the Beit, the Beit, the, in the Beit HaMikdash, in the temple around the altar. And the seventh day, even more, and the Hasidim were dancing. Oh, 
very important to be happy with mitzvot. Don't worry, be happy with the mitzvot. And you actually learned that from King David. Nothing wrong for me to quote all the time King David. I'm a big fan of Tehillim. But why does the Rambam mention at the end King David? We talk about Sukkot. I want now to elaborate the topic. Where does the Rambam take it from? And there's a lot written on this section, a beautiful paper by Professor uh, Blitzstein on the Simcha, the Mishnata Rambam. But I want to focus actually strictly on the mitzvah. Mitzvah Arava Keitzad. What is the mitzvah of the willow branch? How do we fulfill that? There was a special place called Motza. Sorry. They go there to a special place and bring these uh, branches to the Mikdash. And now, Takau Vehriu Vetakau. The Takau. There was a special blowing of the Shofar. Remember, Sukkot, they are blowing Shofar every day. And every day they surround it once a day, the altar. And, and they say, Ana Hashem Oshiana, Ana Hashem Oshiana, God, please save us. Please grant us success. Rabbi Yudha Omer, Ani Vaho Hoshiana. He had another reading, which we need to understand. And we will elaborate that. He read something else. It's written in Tehillim. Ana Hashem Hoshiana, but he reads Ani Vaho Hoshiana. Is he going to make changes to the Bible? Voto hayom akifim et hamizbeach sheva pa'amim. And they do it even seven times the last day. And what they said at the end, we will not elaborate now. So that was what they did for everyday Sukkot. What's the story here? I put it in a few red uh, colored words. Pamachat sheva pa'amim. Then you go around something and you have shofarot. Does that ring a bell or does it ring a shofar? When do we have that? Yericho. Yericho. So tell me, what's the story about Yericho on Sukkot? Wrong address, it sounds. Yericho is a historical event. And what they do here is really the same word, is the same motifs. Why Yericho? Who says that? Somebody in the audience seems to be a great expert in the Yerushalmi. Because it says in the Yerushalmi two words. Oto ayom ekifim et hamizbeach sheva pamim. Amar Rabbi Acha, that is to remember Yericho. What's the connection to Yericho? We celebrate Sukkot. We were 40 years in the desert and came to Eretz Yisrael. Who talks about Yericho these, uh, in this context? But it's obvious. And if you take the words, I will not read it. There will be too much text. But you have here the words and the reading in Yoshua. Instead of Mekifim, it says in Yoshua, the Sabotem. Your troops go, they circle around the city once every day for six days. And afterwards, they take a shofarot and yovlim, and they blow in the shofarot. It is a truah and tkiah and truah. And at the seven days, you do it seven times. What's the point? It's very obvious, I think, as a commentator of the Mishnah, in the, explaining the Mishnah, that the Mishnah talks about Yericho. It's just a new, a new uh, situation, but it is a clearly a déjà vu. It is a, a imitation of Yericho. Why? And here, for many years, I was trying to understand the meaning of the Abad Taminim, beautiful midrashim, well known, and beautiful explanations in the Parshanim. And one of the best explanations I actually heard from a very, very interesting researcher. At, uh, father and the son, Hanoga Haruveni, and his son, and Ephraim and Noga Haruveni, they lived, they came, I think, from Russia and came to Israel. They studied botanics and learned about the plants in Eretz Yisrael. I take you now to a perush of Yerushalmi, which happened in the 19th century, the beginning of the 20th century. 
very interesting people. You will find some of it online. And they explain the meaning of the Arba'at Haminim. I go now to a, for two minutes to another topic, which will give a very meaningful explanation on the Arba'at Haminim. These are the psukim in Sefer Vaikra that we have to take the four minim, the four plans. I go right away to the English. You have it in both languages. And on the website, there is a Hebrew explanation on it from a few pages. So on the 15th day of the seventh month, Tishrei, you have to uh, gather the uh, produce of your land. And we take these four minim. What's the meaning? Let's go to history in the Bible. When they left Egypt, right away, they came to a place, right leaving Egypt, the name is Sukkot. Shmot, chapter 4th of chapter They came to a place named Elim, and there were 12 springs and 70 palms. It's like a reflection of the Jewish people. Beno Yaakov says that. 12, 12 springs, 12 tribes, and everyone has his own sources and resources. 12 mayanot mayim and 70 palms. Tzadik katamar yifrach. A tzadik will blossom like a, a palm. And here you have the 70 elder, elders from the Jewish people. And they start a long journey in the desert. Let's make it short. After 40 years, they come to a place called, what's happening here? They come to the place entering to Yericho. And Jericho in Yericho is named Ir Hatmarim. We will read it by the end of uh, Simchat Torah. Yericho Ir Hatmarim. So uh, walking in the desert, you need water. And you have the water where there is a, where there is a tree, where there is a, pa a palm. The palm tells you where the water is. From the exit of Egypt, Till the entrance to Eretz Yisrael, there were palms on the way, and probably a lot of palms in between. That's the meaning of the of the lulav, which is a palm tree from a palm tree. They crossed the Arava, the area which is to this very day called Arava, because uh, that is the name, and they are Arvei Nachal. And they come to the Hadas, to Eretz Yisrael, and where did they cross it? They entered Yericho. So the Arava is exactly the transition from the desert to Eretz Yisrael. And the Hadas has a meaning. We know it from Zechariah and Etrog, where the, it lives all day long. A beautiful, amazing explanation that the Arba'at Aminim are actually a summary with the plants of Eretz Yisrael from our field and telling our own story. What a wonderful message. A farmer doesn't need words. He needs plants. If he sees these plants growing, he holds them all together, and he sees that the that his history, his background comes all together, from Egypt crossing Yericho, crossing the Yarden, coming to Eretz Yisrael. That's the meaning. That is in itself a beautiful, amazing message from Haruveni. Ramban says something like that. Not full, not the full explanation, but that is an amazing explanation. Now let's come back to the Mishnah. Sukkot, we celebrate, we were in the desert, that's what the Psukim says, because you were 40 years in the desert, in Sukkot, and you came to Eretz Yisrael. You came to Eretz Yisrael, yes, there was an entry to Eretz Yisrael. In Yericho, we celebrate the entry. That's exactly what this Mishnah comes to celebrate. So this is a new meaning of Sukkot. We live in Eretz Yisrael. Out of Egypt is Pesach. Yes, we got out of slavery, not slaves anymore. And we are happy, liberated people. The slaves can do in their life what they want. They are not slaves anymore. Pesach. And Matan Torah Shavuot. But now we are in Eretz Yisrael. What is the entrance to Eretz Yisrael? It's exactly the transition from the Lulav to the Arava. And now we are in Hadas land and etrog land. And that is what we, what is this old Minhag says. I couldn't find that in the commentaries of the Mishnah or the Gemara. And I think that makes a lot of sense to explain this old, old Minhag. I enjoy it that the Minhag, which I never understood before, all of a sudden it makes so much sense. 
And it gets so much meaning that what we have in the Arba Minim, we bring our story and sing about Jewish history and thank God what he did so far and, and ask him and pray, Anna Hashem Hoshia Naki, continue please, this wonderful history. What a powerful meaning. What is now, what are the next words in the Mishnah I want to focus on? Rabbi Yehuda said, instead of Anna Hashem Hoshiana, Anna Hashem Matzlichana, Psalm 118, which describes how the, the pilgrimate, when they came to Eretz Yisrael, Betochechi Yerushalayim, they were, Pitchuli uh, Sharetzedek, they came into the gates of the temple, and when they came there, they were singing and said, I arrived here, thank you very much for saving, I thank you, I praise you, and I ask you for more help, Anna Hashem Oshiana. Makes a lot of sense. The Psalms and the story of the Arbat Haminim, it's just the same, one from the plants and the other one from the text of Tehilim. But what happens to Rabbi Yudah Hanasi? And I ask you here to pay attention to this amazing change. Are the rabbis entitled to change the text of the Psalms? Everybody prays, Anna Hashem Hoshiana, Anna Hashem Hatzlichana. And Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, the editor, the redactor of the Mishnah, he has a different reading. Ani vaho hoshiana. Doesn't he know Hebrew? Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, who wrote a beautiful Mishnah in the most beautiful Hebrew language, the basis for the modern Hebrew language, he changes Anna Hashem. Oh, Ani vaho. Are you changing the text? Why are you changing the text? That is a very tough question. And I think here it's the freedom of the Chachamim to change the text or to interpret the text in a most creative way. I consider this change by Rabbi Yudan Asi one of the most fascinating, like, a, I don't know how to call it. It's a chidush, it's an innovation. It's, a, it's something totally new about what is religious thoughts, theology. He doesn't pray, oh, please, Anna Hashem, save. He says something else. Ani vaho oshiana. Interesting that Rashi and other commenta commentators, which were kind of bothered to explain that, they have a very creative idea and say, Ani vaho has the same numerical value like Anna Hashem. It's true. You see, I calculated here. Uh, Ani is uh, 17 and 61, and uh, Anna Hashem is exactly the same 78. The mathematics is true. But Ribono Shalom, why do you change the word of the Bible? And instead of saying Anna Hashem, you say Ani Vaho. That is, in my opinion, a theological revolution by Rabbi Yudha Hanasi. Rabbi Yudan Asi was the editor of the Mishnah. After the destruction of the temple, he was, according to the Midrash, born at the date when Rabbi Akiva was killed and died as a martyrdom. And it was not slavery. It was not the, the, the generation of the destruction anymore, which Rabbi Akiva experienced. It was the generation of Rabbi Yudan Asi who tried to be independent in Eretz Yisrael with the Mishnayot, and he wanted to establish a new state, had big dreams. And he said, Anna, please, God, is the same word as in Hebrew, Ani. Ani, Hashem, meaning Ani and God, we together will bring it. We will make the Yeshua. What a revolution. That I'm not Mr. Nobody, Rabbi Yudan Asi says, Together with God, I have a partnership. I put myself first. Anna Hashem, Ani Vaho. Together we will do it. I think it is much more than what Martin Buber says, I and though, which is one of his uh, beautiful writings about his, philosoph his philosophical insight. I like to mention it because it's a very interesting insights. But what we have in the Mishnah is by far, by far a bigger evolution. Theology is a religious thought. Religion means the connection. We are connected. 
you help me to do what I want to do, what I have to do, and I will do what you tell me. And we work together. That is what Rabbi Yudha Hanasi says. I think that is the proper explanation. Look what the Yerushalmi says. The Yerushalmi, who has a strong Eretz Yisrael tradition, and they are not frightened to continue the way Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi started, Rabbi Abau B'Shem Rabbi Yochanan said the following, Ani vahu hoshiana, that's what we have in the Mishnah, Ani vahu hoshiana, Amar Rabbi Abau, Ulecha Yeshua Talam. The Pasuk in Tehilim says clearly, and come to our rescue, Lecha milishon lalechet, halicha. You please come, Hashem. We pray, Hashem, please come. I mean, I'm helpless, but you come. But the Yerushalmi says, Lecha vadaya. It is certain up to you, and we will do it together. It's a, it's a little bit of problematic reading, but that is what Jastro says in his dictionary. And in another Midrash, to this Mishnah, Hananiah ben Achir Rabbi Yeshua said, the nephew of Rabbi Yeshua said, sorry, the, ben, the, the nephew of Rabbi Yeshua said, Anochi Hashem Elokecha asher hotzeiticha meretz Mitzrayim. I'm the Lord your God who took you out of the land of Egypt. But it is written, hotzeiticha, you can read the vav with the point up, with the point under, lower down. Asher hotzeiticha who was let out together with you. Hashem says, according to this reading, nobody would pass Ulpam if he reads like that. That's the freedom of Chachamim to interpret the text in their own way. Fascinating. God says, I'm God who came out with you in Egypt. I was in slavery with you when I was in Egypt. Oh, I took you out? I rescued myself. Hashem and Am Yisrael want to be together. What a close relationship. What a rendezvous in the wording of Rav Soloveitchik. They are very close together. Lecha Yeshuatala, you please come. No, it is up to you to come and save me. It is a very special explanation here. I think that explains the mitzvah of the Aravot, according to, I summarized this Mishnah. The, sometimes around in the in the Mikdash, around the altar, and the prayers, which is based on Tehillim, again there, Svibla uh, Mizbeach, uh, around the altar, the Yerushalmi remembers Yericho, but puts the, the entrance to the Mikdash in the context, we came a long way to get here. We came from Egypt. We came from Egypt with palms, and we crossed the Yardin, and in Yericho, and now we are here, and we are closing it. And now we are together. It's like Chatan Bekala. Now we are together in one place. And Rabbi Yudha Hanasi says, Ani Vaho Hashiana. Here we'll make it together. You will help us. What an amazing theological revolution. I want to discuss now the next Mishnah. And this Mishnah, interesting, one is in chapter 4, Mishnah 5. The next is in chapter 5, Mishnah 4, easy to remember. And here it says what happened not during the seven days. What happened the last day? Now let's go to the party. There were dancing. The pious men and men of action, those who do mitzvot, as we read in the Rambam, leaders of the community, Chachamim. They would dance before the people who attended this, who attended the celebration with flaming torches, and they would juggle it in their hands, and they would say before them passages of songs and praise to God. What was exactly the ceremony? In the Mishnah, we have one text, and the Gemara gives another explanation, another light. The Halavim. A lot of musicians are there. How interesting. The Levim, a lot of very interesting instruments to make music. They have a background. You will guess in a moment where, where, these, where these instruments come from. 
על חמש עשרה מעלות היורדות מעזרת ישראל לעזרת נשים. There were fifth כנגד חמישה עשר שיר המעלות שבתהילים שעליהם לוויים עומדים בכלי שיר ואומרים שירה. There were fifteen steps, stairs, between two parts of the, in the temple, and that's the way it looks like in the temple. Fifteen here, below here, up here, at the Levi'im, we're standing here. Fifteen, remembering Tehillim. Why fifteen of Shira Ma'alot? You can build fifty, Sefer Breshit. You can take forty, Sefer Shmot, whatever you want. What's the connection to Tehillim of the Shira Ma'alot? That is the philosophy of architecture. Fifteen Shira Ma'alot, we studied that in our Tehillim class is the way that we come from the exile to Eretz Yisrael. And you have it in the Tehillim, Torah in motion classes. That is the story, the contextual reading, how we come from far away in the diaspora, in the exile, back to Eretz Yisrael. Can you smell David HaMelech here? 15, not 150, not the entire book, connected 15 stairs of Shirei Ma'alot. And here they stand, next to one of the gates, and they have trumpets in their hands. Kohanim, like in Yeriko. And they start, and there, here they are, and they celebrate that they are here. And there is a rest of the Mishnah which I will not elaborate. They have special songs. The place is called Keneget Chamisha Sal Malot Shel Tehillim. You, we can smell David HaMelech. And now I did something which I, I usually do when I learn Tehillim. I connect it to Yeshayahu and to other books in the Bible. And you can do it from Mishnah and Mishnah. And I am going wild. And I take this Mishnah and I colored these words and I check where do they occur in the Bible. Because the Mishnah had for sure the Bible very much in mind. And if they said there are 15 stairs, which connected to Sefer Tehillim, if we search these expressions, we got it totally clear. It's not only the architecture. I will not read, don't worry, I will not read these nine quotations. I don't want you to, uh, to fall asleep or run away. You're welcome to read it. All nine places which I found about Shir, Metziltaim, Nevalim, the Kinorot, eight of them are describing how King David came to Jerusalem and he prepared the temple. He couldn't build it because for his personal sins, he killed too many people. He was, he, he was shedding blood. Yes, he was a, he was a soldier. He was a, a commander. No blood in the temple. Yeah. But he prepared everything. And all the nine places are connected to David, David, with all these songs. So the Mishnah, that's, I want to present that as a chidush. Rabbi Yudah in his in his presence in Eretz Yisrael, he lives King David. I could bring now, uh, I could bring now uh, the, the shiur, which we had on Modim de Rabbanan, the, the punchline of Modim de Rabbanan is, according to the Yerushalmi, that everybody connects to King David when he comes there. It's exactly the same idea. It's the same line. And even in the second temple period, at the time of Nehemiah, they were using the same instruments. And it says in, in Nehemiah and Ezra and Nehemiah very clearly, they were singing the songs of King David. So the Mishnah sings King David. It is both Yericho when they entered Eretz Yisrael from the exile, and it is the fulfillment of joy which King David had when he brought the uh, Aaron uh, to, uh, to Jerusalem. Hello, does it ring a bell? Why did Rambam mention that? We'll come to that in a moment later. King David is directly present in the Mishnah. And that is what Rabbi Yudah Hanasi wanted to say. And now we go to a fascinating part in the Gemara. The Gemara explains what were these songs, these praises and songs, Shirot v'tishbachot. Fascinating enough, they did not say Halel. 
the Gemara says, both in the Yerushalmi and the Babli, people were singing about themselves. Happy is the person who his childhood and his older age is a continuity. And those who were Balei Tshuva, happy that you made Tshuva. They were singing about themselves. It is a reflection of their own life. The praise and the songs to Hashem is a song about themselves. What an amazing insight. We have that already in the Tosefta. And now we come to Hillel, one of the most beautiful examples which I met as a, I think I was at the Bar Mitzvah, uh, when I was at the age of Bar Mitzvah, and I didn't understand it much later when I saw the Tosfot, you will see it in a moment. Tanya, Amru alav al Hillel azaken. Kishaya sameach besimchat beit ha-shoeva, amar ken. Im ani kan, hakol kan. Ve'im eini kan, mi kan. He said, the, uh, the Hillel, the elder said, if I'm here, everyone is here. And if I'm not here, who is here? He was not egocentric. We'll talk about Hillel in a moment. But he says, presence. I'm here. I'm fulfilled to be here. If I'm here, my life is fulfilled. There is a presence. Why? Because I'm with you and with God. I have a simcha. In English, we say, or actually in Latin or in, in Greek, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is a literal translation of being with God. Enteos, in God. He is fulfilled with God. It's an enjoyment. That's his enthusiasm. He then said, according to the Bavli, Imanika Hakolka. The next line reads the lines read the following. Where he said to the place that I love, there my feet take me. And therefore, if I'm in the temple, you will be there and I will be there. We meet. It's a oil moed, the place of meeting. What a wonderful, wonderful in simcha. We are together. And here comes a fascinating machloket between Rashi and Tosfot. Rashi says, what does it mean, imanikam hakolkan? If I'm here, everyone is here. And if I'm not here, who is here? What does that mean? So Rashi, yes, medieval age, uh, 12, 11th century in Europe, time of the beginning of the, crusade, uh, of the uh, crusaders. And he said, no, no, no. It can't be that Hillel talks about himself. Impossible. Don't be blown up yourself. Hillel was talking about Hashem's present in the temple. Hashem says, and he was talking, so to say, in, in the name of God. Tosfot says, no, no, no. Shahayal mer alatzmo. Where does Tosfot take it from? And we will see the Tosfot in a moment. Tosfot says, because we actually learned that in the Yerushalmi. That's what the Tosfot says. That's what the Yerushalmi says. Hilel Azaken, that's the transition of the Yerushalmi Talmud to exactly the same Mishnah. We can put it line on the same line. Hilel Azaken, Kat Havachami, Lon Avdin Bepachas, when he saw that they were enjoying... Uh, uh, um, the enjoyment in another respectful way, he said, even though we are here, who is here? If we have just fun and we are losing it, we are, tr uh, God doesn't need us here. Why do, why are we here? But if he saw that they are acting properly, he said, wow, if we are not here, who is here? But if Am Israel is in the temple and is saying to Hilim, because who, what are they saying? They're saying exclamations to Hashem. What kind of explanation? Tehilim, you have it here. Yoshev Tehilot Yisrael, Neim Zmirot Yisrael. If we are here and fulfill Tehilim, we are here. That is the presence of our life. That is our enthusiasm. And King David is our role model. That's what the Yerushalmi says. Please pay attention that the presence of King David is evident here, all about Tehillim, quoting Tehillim and King David. King David, he fulfilled it. No surprise, these 15 stairs, because King David is 
the fulfillment of religious experience. And it is pre presented in Lashon Rabim, plural. If we are here as a Jewish people, and if we say the Tehillim, that's the fulfillment, not just that Hillel is happy to be here and he has his religious experience. It is the religious experience imitating King David, being a part of King David. David Melech Israel Chai Bekayam, regardless that he died some 3,000 years ago. We are still going in his, in his way, Chai Bekayam. Now look at that here, that the difference is beautiful. Rashi, who lived in the exile, in a Christian environment and on terrible conditions, he did not have, for understandable reasons, he didn't talk about myself, I'm here in the right place. He was just wondering, is he still part of, the, of God's guidance? So he said God was talking. But Tosfot realized that's not the Pshat. And Tosfot learned the Yerushalmi. You have to watch the Yerushalmi. But the Yerushalmi talks about Am Yisrael, Lashon Rabim in the plural. And here's the Gemara, which I, the way I, I remember it. Amru alav halilel zaken, kishaya samech b'simchat b'yit sheva amar ken, imani kan akol kan, v'imani kan nikan. That's the text in the Talmud. What does Rashi say? Rashi says, imani kan doresh haya l'rabim shelo yechta'u b'shmo shel HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He was talking to the audience there, to the population gathering there, kivyachol in the name of God, imani kan, as long as you do what I want, I will be with you. He was far away from Hashem. He couldn't say, I'm here, I'm happy, because he writes in one of his texts in Tehillim, he writes, I, my, I can't stop crying day and night when I see the Jewish communities are killed. He wasn't an independent, happy citizen of Eretz Yisrael. What does Tosfot say? Peresh bekuntras, Shaya Yilel Omer Bishmo Shel Kodesh Baruch Hu, Aval Bayerushal Mi Mashma, Shaya Omer Al Atzmo. He was talking, it, Tosfot says, according to Rashi, it is, it is a, 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 dedicated to Hashem. But in the Yerushalmi it says, he was talking about himself. And he quotes the entire Yerushalmi. Tosfot understood, if you don't understand it properly, and you have any question, and Tosfot's grandchildren and students of Rashi, he realized here it comes to a dead end. You better look at the Tosfot. The Tosfot said, you better look at the Yerushalmi. The Yerushalmi knows to say, I, we are here, according to King David. That's not a surprise for Hillel, because we know Hillel, we know him from Mishnayin Avot, who I Omer, im eina nili mili, uchshani latzmi ma'ani, v'im lo achshav eimatai. He was very much aware about his own role and responsibility. If I'm not here for myself, who is here for me? But if I'm only here for myself, what am I? I have to do it. Eli Wiesel has a beautiful uh, chapter on uh, uh, the Talmudic figures explaining the personality and these Mishnayot. Hillel knew to be here and to use his presence to do what he has to do. Now, for the last 10 minutes of the shiur of the series, I would like to look at the Hoshanot. The Hoshanot, once we understood these beautiful differences between Yerushalmi and Bavli, Based these Mishnayot, explaining the enjoyment, we have a wonderful, wonderful rabbi, Rav, Rabbi Elazar Hakalil, a genius uh, poetry he wrote, and he was a renowned Jewish liturgical poet, and many piyutim he wrote, which are in many places in the Sidur. Some of them are accepted in the Sidur, some are not. And he is highly respected in the, in the history of poetry. Elbogen was one of the first who wrote about it some hundred years ago, and the lot was written afterwards. And some of his texts were actually found in the Gnizam in Cahil. Wonderful poetry. Where did he live? In Kiryat Sefer. That is what he writes in one of the poets. Nobody knows where it is, but probably he liked his home so much because there he can sit and read so he called his own hometown, his place, that's where my library is. I can read and study and pray and write. And here we have a, 
excellent example in the Hoshanot, which we say every day, not in the temple and not in Yericho. We say it wherever we are. But we have his prayers, which are deeply, strongly, and directly influenced by the Yerushalmi. Tosfot, in a totally different place, says that is a, a, a poetry, a liturgical poetry, Sheyasad HaKalil. And he, Yasad Dvarav Al Pia Yerushalmi, whatever he wrote is according to the Talmud Yerushalmi. He lived somewhere in Eretz Yisrael, in Syria, not clear exactly where. And very often he quotes something from the Midrash and he said, no, no, I'm not quoting the Bavli. I'm the guy from the Yerushalmi. He's one of the oldest authors of the Yerushalmi. And he is directly in our Sidur, part of our Sidur. So we have a testimonial, we have in our Sidur, the, all the Hoshanot are classical Yerushalmi Midrashim, which we say every day. When we have an enjoyment, our enjoyment is not according to the Bavli. It's too far away. You cannot really have the Simcha, which you have in Eretz Yisrael. So we can learn about the difference in Bavli and Yerushalmi, so to speak, from the back door. We learn through the Rabbi Elazar Kalir, which in itself is a beautiful study, we can learn why did he pick the Yerushalmi and not the Bavli. And look at his well-known uh, Hoshanat. Lemancha Eloheinu Hoshana. For your own sake, God, please save us. Yes, we would appreciate it to be saved. It's not fun to be killed. But we actually want to, to live for you. Lemancha Boeinu. You created us. For your sake, our creator, please save us. It's all about you. Lemancha goaleinu. Please pay attention to the beautiful olive bit. Lemancha dorsheinu. Who, you, who are seeking us, please, let's be friends. Let's stay in touch. It's, it's a big privilege to be in touch with you, Hashem. And look what he says on the next line. Ana hoshiana. Ana hoshiana. Ani vaho oshiana. Ani vaho oshiana. That's exactly the Mishnah. That's what I call the revolution, the theological religious revolution of Rabbi Yudha Hanasi, who was the classical representative of Torah Eretz Yisrael, the Mishnah. And he quotes exactly the Mishnah. Really surprising because in Tehilim it says, Anna Hashem Hoshiana. But the Khalil takes that as an opening. And look here, a beautiful poem, which I couldn't find in my Sidurim, Machzurim, but I found it online. Anna el echad ushmo echad. Umi yeshivenu vehu beechad. Kara shamayim vaaretz vayamdu keechad. Hoshienu vachagigat yom echad. Please, the one God whose name is one and who can bring him down, and he is one, who called heaven and earth so they will stand as one. Please save us on the celebration of the one first day of Sukkot. That's the way he praises God. Yes, that's a nice praise of God, but we live in a partnership. Who is the second part? Anna, zechor av yarashet ha'aretz v'haya echad. Please, Hashem, remember the father, Avraham, who inherited the land and who was one. He was one and unique. He prepared for those rebels one heart and one way. He was declaring the name of Hashem. So everybody should worship Hashem belev echad, that all nations should call in the name of God and worship him as one, all together. We learned these midrashim in the midrash on, Yom Hatz, on, Yom, on Rosh Hashanah. We had these ideas exactly in the Yerushalmi. Please save us on the, celebrating, on the celebration of the one first day. So we have two parts here for the first day. It is Hashem, and it's Am Yisrael, Avraham, and we are just a very good match. Let's do it together, we say Hashem. 
אני והו הושיע נא. What an amazing statement. And look here at the other famous closing, Hoshana, which I will not read the entire text. It was too busy to translate it, but you can see it in the, in the translations. אני והו הושיע נא. כהושעת אלים בלוט אימך, בצאתך לישע אמך. כן, הושענה. Like you saved the great ones from Lut, the son of Mitzrayim, it's Egypt, with you. You saved Am Yisrael with yourself. It's exactly what we learned in the Yoshani before, when you went out to save your people. So too, please save us now. And later on, he says, everything is written according to a beautiful, masterful alphabet. כהושעת המאמר והוצאתי אתכם, נקוב והוצאתי אתכם. כן, הושענה, like you saved, with the, you saved us with the statement, and I will take you out, אתכם, but it is designated and I will go with you, אתכם, so that is an amazing, I will go, I will be liberated. Hashem says, I'm liberated from Egypt with you. I would not be a free God without the Jewish people. So it is an interaction, a mutual relationship. And at the end we say, Ani vaho shiana, quoting a pasuk in Tehilim, Hoshia et tamecha uvarechet nachvatecha, Mizmor Kavchet is talking about Moshiach, about Eretz Yisrael. And what are we quoting? We are quoting what did uh, Shlomo say at the celebration of the Mizbeach, of the temple, in Melachim Chet, and he's quoting the entire Pasuk. The Hoshanat are the celebration of living in Eretz Yisrael. Oh, he lived in the, in the sixth century. It was not really celebrating Eretz Yisrael. But he studied the Yerushalmi, and he was living in Eretz Yisrael with the Yerushalmi in the total mental history, in the mental setup I live Yerushalmi in Eretz Yisrael, regardless that it was a disaster in this time. So that is the summary. Now we understand, I think, very well that the Rambam, who I quoted at the beginning, who gives such a beautiful overview that on, on Sukkot we have to celebrate, yes, the role model to celebrate is King David. Because if our religious life is just not achieving the joy, and the, the special relationship which King David had when he brought, when he came to Yerushalayim, and we are not experiencing the same uh, experience, we don't get to the right point. Might be Rabbi Jay, that's the reason that he took Shofar and Sukalulav together. Rav Rabinovich says, Yerosh Hashanah, you wake them up. Hakitsu nirdamim. Don't sleep anymore. Wake up. It's a wake-up call. But at the end, it's not because Sifrei Achayim, the Sifrei Metim, and we are nervous and frightened. We enjoy it. It's actually lots of fun. It gives a lot of meaning to our life to live together with God. That is what the Yerushalmi says. And the Yerushalmi recruits King David. And the Rambam, when he closes Hilchot Sukkah, exactly King David is the star figure, is the role model of Simcha, because he fulfilled it. So I hope I could give you with this a little bit an overview on Sukkot. Some of it is, uh, was written by Dr. Yaffa Zilka, and I quoted it. I tried to give you an overview on the four topics, starting with Rav Kook and Modim de Rabbanan. In the Bavli, yes, you survive. In the Yerushalmi, you start the next chapter in Eretz Yisrael, and you thrive and grow. Rosh Hashanah, we can't say Hallel according to the Bavli, because the books of death and life are open. How can you dare to sing and praise Hallel? Yerushalmi? No, it's the most wonderful day. We celebrate it. We are happy. We are the best partners and friends of God. He, and, he empowers us. Yom Kippur, we spoke about the tefillah of the Kohen Gadol about the confession, how much responsibility of the priest and everybody who says vidui. He's taking his, his life in his hands and makes his own vidui. And what I showed in Hoshanot, we live the geula and the joy of Sukkot by being home after a long journey of 40 years in the desert 
Now we are here with the album in him and the new meaning. So I cannot stop these wonderful ideas from the for the Abat Minim. So Rabbi Jay, allow me, I have to say something about the parasha, which summarizes beautifully, amazingly well the concept of the Yerushalmi. In next week's parasha, parasha Hazinu, it says at the end, ki lo davar reku mikem, ki hu chayechem. The Torah is not something empty, a word from you. It's our life. It's your life. And the Yerushalmi is so powerful, and I think that's a powerful, typical message of the Yerushalmi. Ki lo davar reku mikem. The Torah is not something, an empty word from you. But if it is empty, it's empty from you. You did not connect to it. You cannot identify with it. You cannot really live with it. You are not in a relationship. You do not engage in an in a interaction with Hashem. That leaves the Torah very empty. Why? Because I'm not part of it. This anikam hakolkam, ani vaho, is so typical for the Yerushalmi. I hope I was successful to give you a little bit of a taste of the uh, Talmud Yerushalmi. I was dreaming to prepare 30 lectures and might be we do it another time. I would like to thank Audrey for all the wonderful explanations and Dr. Ravda, Dr. Hanoch Gamliel and many sources where I could learn from. And most importantly, I would like to thank you all for participating and your feedback. And we should be blessed to learn a lot of things together. Are there any questions? Amen. Thank you, Rabbeni. Um, Gershon Hebner wrote in the chat, uh, the recollection of Yericho with the blowing of the shofar reflects the sound of Tshuwa, which is destruction, before the Simcha, that's signaled by Tekiah. Very nice. So you see that these there are more motifs than what I, what I could uh, show in the text. Of course, it's a very, very deep connection. And the Yerushalmi says it in two words. Zecher Le'ericho. Yerushalmi is extremely short. You have to sit and think and think sometimes for years. And I have a lot of open questions. Not that I understand the Yerushalmi. I have a broad knowledge. But there are many things that which get clear after learning and learning. All of a sudden, something gets clear. Any other question? No, Benny, I, you know, it's it's this idea, the splitting the bubble of Shemi is like unheard of here. In other words, our tradition over 99 years just melded it all together. Like there's no, oh, the Hoshanas represents a Yerushalmi attitude. Like like it's, uh, I don't know if this is catching on in Israel or this is just, the, you know, the eight people who sort of, you know, uh, who study this. But I, I just find, you know, I don't know if you want to comment on that. Like, because basically what you're saying is there are two Hashkafot. Of, of Judaism. And what we've done is we've mixed the Hashkafot with any recognition that they're different. Like, you don't see a difference of Torah and Eretz Yisrael, I guess. For sure. May, I don't know if you see it in the religious Zionist community, for sure not in the Haredi community, but uh, if you want to comment on that. So your question is probably better than my short answer. I see a lot of tefillot where if you really enjoy Simchat, uh, Simchat Sukkot, and we walk around all together. Where do we walk around all together? When I put my tefillin, I have seven movements like that. When you get married, seven times walking around. And Simchat Torah. Hakafot, which is the next part. With the Torah, which is the same idea, taking it to another level. Simchat Torah with Hakafot, which come much later. So it is a lot of symbolism. There are a lot of symbols. But these specific ideas, they're typically Yerushalmi. When I showed at the end that there's a beautiful elaboration of that, by Necham Alevovich, it is a classical Yerushalmi. Where are you? Where does it touch your heart? It doesn't touch your heart. It's empty. It's not you. Remember the shiur we have on the Vidui, the confession. In the Bavli, they had seven texts, sins, sins. You read the text and you're full of sins. And if you just said, oh, I'm full of sins, yatsata, you said it all. The, the Yerushalmi says, no, 
הרע עשיתי, and I will change it. I will make something out of it. That is Yerushalmi philosophy. So I think it needs more studies, and I'm not the expert, but what I learned so far, typical features, and I think it is important to learn more and more to show what is typical. It might be that there is a lot of overlap. Might be that there are contradictions. I cannot comment on that. I don't have the full picture. But they are amazing. I just have here next to my desk a book of uh, 970 pages, which just compare all the Yerushalmi and Bavli where you can find it. It's a very good search system because these, these are not the same words. And it's really a special challenge to learn what is what does the Yerushalmi teach us. We saw that the Hakaliyah was deeply connected to the Yerushalmi. Um, and other experts, uh, other big Chachamim were. The majority, they live in the Galut with the Bavli, and of course, with all the enthusiasm and the appreciation for the Bavli, put the Yerushalmi next to it, and you will see different angles. I think, Rabbi Jay, we see two different approaches, which are so totally, totally relevant for our generation. And I was told, you never talk about Zionism, for sure not when you're in Chutz Laaretz. So I would never do that, never ever. I would burn my fingers and it would be the last lecture. I don't want that to happen to Rabbi Jay. So I have a much better approach. I just teased Jay Rushalmi. Is, is that, was that Dr. Zikar with his book that you were showing? Beg your pardon? The book you just showed, the book you just showed with 970 pages. Is that Dr. Zikar? Or, I'm, no, no. I don't, sorry? Dr. Zikar is here? Yeah. So I tried buying her book, but I, I couldn't figure out where to get it. It wasn't on Bay Don't worry. Don't worry. You, are, you will get it from me when you're next time here. These are in okay. Hebrew. And these are top research books summarizing Dokeya uh, Talmudim and special scholars in uh, Yerushalayim who do that. Uh, incredible memory. And of course, a lot of, uh, a lot of support, electronic support, search system. But they are not just, book? sorry? Who wrote that book? They're different authors. That is, uh, one is by Rav, uh, I got the name. Uh, okay. I forgot he doesn't put his name here. Look how interesting. And that is, these are young scholars, young Talmidei Chachamim, and he worked on that for 10 years. I know that. So there's a lot of fascinating research, and I can just encourage if I would have the time to study now again in the yeshiva, I would focus on this topic. It brings so much messages, which are much more than just very interesting historical differences and philosophical differences. It's really life. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to uh, continued learning and... Uh... In terms of uh, here at our motion tonight, Mark Shapiro will be, you know, continuing his series on the letters of the Rav. Uh, tomorrow, Dr. Sokol on the Torah, Moshe Shulman on, on Kohelet. Wednesday, Simi Peters will be finishing her series on um, on Sefer Yona. Thursday, Cousin Malavani on the Nusach for Ni'ila. Then our Parsha Shear, I think Dr. Sokol, I think, is giving the Parsha Shear this week too. And then my Shear on the Mapsar on Friday morning. And then Saturday night, Erev uh, Yom Kippur, uh, yeah, sort of, depends where you live. Um, I guess uh, um, Menachem Liebtag will be giving a class uh, like we did on Erev Sleepers, 10 o'clock at night. Benny, you don't have to come, 5 in the morning. I don't know when you get up in the morning, but uh, believe me, I wouldn't come at 5 in the morning to Shir. But um, anyways, okay. Uh, unlike Rav Sal, maybe Rav Salavich. That's, you know, the Rav's famous line. The Rav said, if I would go and come into YU at 3 o'clock in the morning, Sam giving more shear, it'd be full. Everybody would come to the shear. But when he talks about his sort of uh, Ashkapak things, they had no interest. They just wanted his Gemara. They didn't care about his other stuff. So uh, three in the morning they would come, but because uh, he tried to teach one year, your Tanya in, um, in Boston in the summer. And uh, after two, three days, everybody complained. They, we don't want to learn this stuff. Go back to Gemara. So he says, you know, what do you think? They said, I don't care about that. They just want his Hidushima Gemara. Anyways, Three in the morning. Oh, five I'm happy. The... We are happy to send out a questionnaire. Yeah, I think you did already. Uh, you put it out. Okay. I, send I, out. You know. Okay. So uh, it is a good feedback to hear because I know I went uh, 
with some text, a lot of Hebrew, and uh, might be not enough translation. It's another style, but I tried to do my best, and I would like to hear feedback. I'm actually dreaming to prepare it for Hebrew classes as well, like a syllabus, and might be we will continue. So it's good to hear some feedback to to understand what people understood and what was too hard. Okay, it's like I say, the, the best feedback is all the people who come and stay for all the classes. That's the that's the primary feedback. Yeah, so uh, in that sense, uh, very good. They, they, it went up, you know, we have 55 at the end of class today, you know, um, more so uh, more than we had at the beginning of the class. Anyway, okay. Gamar Khatim uh, Tova, 8.30 tonight. Again, Mark Shapiro, our next class. And uh, we hope everybody, like I said at the beginning, of everybody had a, a meaningful Rosh Hashanah and inspiring and uh should uh Akadosh Baruch should hear our prayers for good there's a lot to, a lot we have to tell them for okay a lot to anyways okay be well everybody thank you Rebbe thank, 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 thank you thanks everybody for participating thanks to Susan and Audrey thanks a lot thank you fantastic and love the Hebrew so perfect mix brilliant